Whew. It's a scorcher out there. I really want to talk about what assistive technology is, why you should care as a teacher, web developer, healthcare provider, therapist, human, um, and who uses this technology, what do they use it for, and how can we be more inclusive in knowing about assistive technology and that people use it? Hey everyone, it's me, Africa. I am coming to you today to talk about assistive technology, one of my favorite topics ever and something that I use a lot as an occupational therapist and something that I'm thinking about a lot as a web developer as I start to create um, programs and software. Assistive technology helps people who have trouble speaking, people who have trouble with fine motor skills or who have injuries that impair their ability to use their hands impair their ability to move around or be mobile. They also help people who have trouble with verbal speech, with hearing. They can include things that are high tech and low tech. If we're thinking about low tech, we're thinking about things like um, a communication device. And when I say device, I mean more like a communication pad. I can create a communication device that says yes or no. Right, And the person can point to it if they mean yes and point to it if they mean no. That is assistive technology. Um, it's just a very low tech version of it. A high tech version of that would probably be something on some type of tablet that's a program where they can actually tap it and it speaks out and they can communicate if they do have some verbal um, deficits going on there. So when we talk about software versus hardware, software are just things that are programs that are doing something for the person um, using some type of program or technology. So those things can look like hearing aids, screen readers, which are just programs that um, read text on a computer so that people with visual impairments are able to use the internet and use the computer and know what's going on. Um, the screen reader that I mentioned before, that would be more of that high tech um, software type of uh, assistive technology, uh, voice to speech, um, speech to text, things like that. Those are uh, software. Hardware would be more like uh, a mounting device for an iPad, right? So someone who maybe has a decreased mobility in their hands and can only reach so far. Uh, another version of hardware would be like a switch. So if someone is not able to maybe use a uh, mouse, my mouse is, could almost be considered assistive technology as well because it is a specialized mouse, but say they're not even able to have the fine motor controller skills to use a mouse, maybe they use a switch that you plug into the computer and they just tap it and that allows them to click or to do some type of action on their computer. Keyboards are also another good example of assistive technology. This is a pretty regular, just acrylic keyboard, but there are keyboards that have like bigger letters uh, so that people are more able to easily see the letters on here and tap them um, if they do have any visual motor or fine motor um, impairments that will require them to use a bigger keyboard. Even something like a wrist guard would, could be considered assistive technology if it's specifically used to increase their ability to access whatever device it is that's helping them with independence. Headphones, special headphones that either block out sound or illuminate sound or uh, make sound louder um, are considered te assistive technology. So this would be considered kind of like the hardware and if there was a specific, uh, special program that amplified sound, that would kind of be like the software inside that hardware. Even things like this here microphone, if used for you know very specific things or reasons to increase independence, it could be considered assistive technology. Things like a magnifying glass, that's like a good example of like a no tech, low tech low tech um, assistive technology device. Some of those magnifiers that we recommend as OTs actually do have programs in them that are really cool. Some of them will magnify and read the text using a, um, a program. Um, there's also things like electronic organizers for people with ADHD. 
um, different programs that help organize on the computer. Things like binders are considered uh, like a low tech, no tech assistive technology, whereas like the program that you would use on the computer, maybe like a Google Doc or something that has a bunch of different um, tables to organize could be considered assistive technology. Um, all these things help people navigate their world with more independence um, and create some more inclusive environments so that they can participate in the things that we can. So. Um, somebody who's neuro, neurotypical or does not have any impairments that impact their ability to move in the world. We're able to do all of these things so we don't really think about what it would mean if we got in a car accident and suddenly broke our arm and you know we broke both of our arms like how are we going to use things. Um, so that's kind of where occupational therapists and assistive technology professionals and speech therapists and people like that um, can come in and give you the tools to kind of evaluate what your needs are in those areas if you do have impairments. Um, so I love assistive technology because it can help you do so many different things. You can see that there, it, there's like a very large amount of different technologies that you can work with to help people be more independent um, in the world that they're in. And as, as therapists, I think it's important for us to be aware of assistive technology so that we know that there are things that we can recommend to our patients who have impairments. Um, it's important for educators because you have to know that those things exist as well and know how to navigate it so that your instruction is more accessible. And for developers, it's extremely important, especially web developers to think about the people who are using devices and how they're going to use those devices to navigate your websites. So if you're, you know, if your HTML, for example, is not semantically structured, a person with a screen reader is going to have a pretty difficult time navigating your website. And it's really interesting because as I've worked with assistive technology and worked with people who use it, one of the things we run into a lot is not being able to accurately or, you know, with any luck, um, navigate websites because the screen reader is just spitting out like random things because it's not structured semantically at, at all. You know, it's just like a bunch of divs and it takes forever for us to hit a tab and to get to the next thing. Some things they, they forgot to make it possible to tap through their website. So now a person who doesn't use a mouse can't even use their website. So I feel like knowing little things like that is so helpful and while it may take a little extra effort to consider it, I mean, it really doesn't take, like once you make it more of a habit, it, it's not too hard to kind of just do the extra step at the, the beginning rather than waiting at the end and having to like redo your whole website because of one little thing that could have been done at the beginning. I wanted to keep this short but sweet so that um, anybody just curious about assistive technology could watch this video and just get a really quick rundown of, of what that is. Um, so I hope that you guys go forth with this information with just a little bit more awareness of the fact that so many different people are using these devices. Leave a comment. Let me know what you thought about this video and don't forget to subscribe and like that does help. And I really appreciate it. I'll see you guys next time for our next video on, I don't know what, maybe it'll be on uh accessibility or i don't know we'll see i think it'll be on web accessibility because i've been really into that lately but we'll see anyways love you guys bye mm.